We're going to get started right now with news you can use. And today we've got an unusual topic we're going to discuss. Actually, it's very, very, very current trends. And these are some things that we're noticing out in the uh, on the acquisition side. Some some interesting things. I think it's save you guys a lot of money and get you some properties. Um, this market, in terms of the ability of a seller to command what they want, when they want, all of the things that they were able to do with their property a few months ago has disappeared. Um, these guys are getting panicked out there. And what we're actually seeing, and I've seen this one other time in my 23-year career in this business, but there was a window of opportunity was when, as investors, we were able to buy off the MLS. In other words, we didn't have to do almost any marketing other than contact real estate agents and say, we would be interested in buying properties that you list. And we're actually, one of the reasons that we, we've seen this um, lately is that a lot of the realtors who have listed properties recently, like the last month uh, or two, maybe even three, a lot of these real estate agents never experienced a downturn. And so they don't know what to do. Um, in, in a lot of cases, houses that are listed on the MLS have received zero offers. Nobody has showed up for open houses. There's nothing going on. And these agents are like, I don't know what to do because I've never seen this before. And rightfully so. I mean, the last time this happened was in eight, nine. And so an agent who's been in the business for 10 years would have never seen this type of market again or since. Um, and I, I brought Brandy on tonight to kind of tell you a little bit about it. Brandy, as you know, is our chief acquisitionist for all the businesses. And she's on that literal bleeding edge of the spear, tip of the spear. And she hears and sees what's going on out there. And she was talking today on one of our team calls about the fact that a lot of folks uh, are, are calling in and they have a listed property. Um, they have an agent, they have a listed property, they've got nothing so far. And uh, so Brandly, Brandy has talked to a number of these folks and we'll share with you here right now, you know, some of the frustrations that she's hearing from these sellers who aren't getting any movement. Uh, tell us a little bit about your experience there, Brandy. Um, well, just to start out, a lot of the, uh, this is all coming from my follow-up. So this is why follow-up is so, so important. Um, I've spoken to, I can't even count how many people who decided to go with listing their homes. Um, some of the more common things I'm hearing is, I listed my property, I'm still stuck in it, I can't move on until... Uh, until it's, you know, until I can, I can do something with it. I can't afford cheap payments or people who have moved out of their home, listed their home. And then, um, and then that home is now sitting there and they're still paying for it with, and, and it's still listed with a realtor. I talked to a gentleman whose home has been listed since, since December of last year and it still hasn't moved. So a lot of the frustrations I'm seeing are these agents promising, over promising, and under delivering to yeah. their sellers, giving them a false sense of confidence that their home is going to sell, and and then just letting them down altogether. Um, so a lot of these people I'm following up with are they are now in a they were in a position before where I'm going to listen and see what happens. Now they are. Now they're desperate. Yep. And desperate sellers make for good deals, right? And, and so we've got several options here. Uh, number one is just by virtue of you contacting, you, you can do this two ways. You can contact the sellers directly, uh, but an easier way and one that I've seen work even better um, is to contact these agents. Uh, if you want to work a certain area, let's just pick, for example, Omaha, Nebraska. You want to work Omaha, Nebraska. I would look up and I would find one of the many letters you can find online uh, that tell you how to reach out to a real estate agent. And so um, I've got a couple and here next week or so. We'll share these uh, with you guys. It's just a standard kind of letter talking to the agents, just kind of a heart to heart person-to-person -person discussion about, listen, are you in over your head? Do you have any properties you can't sell? Do you have any properties with the sellers being unreasonable? 
uh, and, and you can't move it as a result. Any properties that need a little bit of work on them, uh, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch of different terminology that I think would be helpful out there. But I've done this before, and I was able to get, I've told this story before, uh, the first time I did this, I got a response from a, a young real estate agent named Eric Carney, and he brought a foreclosure that he had. He had no idea how to get rid of a foreclosure. He was brand new in the real estate gig, and he brought it to me. I knew how to turn a foreclosure into a subject to deal with a seller carry back, and I was able to get it turned, get the guy paid off. He liked that so much that we were, we were able to help him on that deal that over the next two or three years, we ended up doing uh, 84 purchases from him. In other words, he bought, he brought 84 properties to me that we bought. He in turn got, when we fixed the properties, he got the resale on it. So, um, and that's one of the things we talk about in these letter campaigns to these agents out there. And when I say letter, I'm talking about email letter. These don't even have to be put into the mail. You can get, you know, everybody in your local MLS is email. You can send out a letter to them saying, listen, you know, you having a hard time selling a house. Uh, you know, we're the go-to people. Let's need a little bit of work or a lot of work. We're the go-to people. Is somebody overburdened financially? You know, we're the go-to people. And not only can you make a commission on this thing um, versus today, if they're not able to sell it, they're not making a commission at all. But you can not just make one, but you can make two, and even in some cases, three commissions uh, on a single property. And the way they do that is if they bring you a property they've got listed, they're going to get it and then they sell it to you. They're going to get the listing and the selling commission. And then if we turn around and fix the house up and put it back on the market and give it to them to list, they're going to get that one as well. Potentially, they could even get four commissions on the same property. And that is a significant deal for a lot of these agents who are out there floundering right now, unable to sell a house. And you will be shocked at the amount of response. We just started doing it with one of the other housing teams. And we're getting eight, just two agents in particular are bringing us deals every day that we're looking at. And some of them are really good. So, you know, in some cases, they can't get the seller to agree. But in a lot of cases, they're like, okay, the seller doesn't want to take that big of a discount yet. In one case, we were able to buy something with terms. Because just like Brandy uh, described, these sellers, you know, they've had their properties on the market for a long time. In some cases, they've already moved out. They've moved on, bought a new place, and they need somebody to make that underlying payment. So that's a subject to uh, maybe with a seller carryback if there's enough equity. Uh, but once again, allows you zero marketing dollars, allows you to get it really cheap, gives you an advocate. The agent themselves can advocate for your position. In other words, why... They need to buy from you uh, because either it's a cash deal or you're offering some terms, get some little bit more money or, or some solution to their problem, but it can happen very, very quickly. And so, like I said, I saw this one other time uh, in the business in the last 23 years I've been in it and it worked fantastic. And we're in it right now. We just, in the last couple of weeks, we popped into this zone where you can literally buy off the MLS. Now, when I say buy off the MLS, I'm not saying go to the MLS and make discounted offers on every property. And just some guys will teach you to do that where there's, you know, a thousand properties on the MLS, you make a thousand cheap offers and you get one accepted. Maybe I'm not saying to do that. What I'm saying is you develop long-term relationships with agents who have properties on the MLS and that will give you a, a honey hole in some cases that you can go to again and again and again, Eric Carney, the young guy that I worked with, 84 deals for him that he got over a two or three year period of time. Uh, and some of those were double into commissions. So a triple into commissions in some cases. Um, and that that is, I mean, you know, we, he made all the money he was ever going to make in the business during that two or three year period of time. And we were his probably 80 percent of his business. I mean, he was busy all the time finding us deals. We'd buy them. We'd fix them, we'd sell them, we'd list them with him. He'd get paid again, he'd get paid again, he'd get paid again. And uh, agents get that. They, they would prefer to deal with somebody that they can get repeat business from or do repeat business with rather than some whiny ass organic home buyer who's worried about the color of the toilet seat and you know the paint chipping you know, in the upper right-hand corner of the basement or something. Um, you know, listen, we're, we're cool, we're flexible, we'll buy them as is, 
you know, no hassle, no stress, no trauma, drama, nothing like that. Uh, just, you know, a good deal done quickly and done assuredly. So you, Mr. or Miss real estate agent, when they know you've got a deal and you can go on to the next one, go find us something else we can buy again from you and then list with you. And you will be shocked at how easy it is to develop a large business with zero marketing dollars by doing that. It's, and if you don't, if you can't even find emails, and you can find emails today for everybody, but if you can't even get an email list, you just pick up the phone and start calling people. You just pull up the MLS on any of the sites, you know, Redfin or Trulia or, you know, even Zillow. You look at the agents, you just call them up. Say, listen, I'm an investor in the area. I'm looking to buy stuff, uh, you know, and you probably don't have anything right now, but it's a chance for you to make two, three, four commissions on a deal. Uh, you'll make more than you've ever made. It'll be the easiest work you've ever done, and it'll be the quickest that you've ever gotten paid. And you will have, uh, like I said, once they understand that concept, uh, they'll be jumping over the back fence and uh, wanting to throw houses your way. So uh, that is that is our news that you can use for today. A little bit off the normal topic realm, but uh, very important subject matter to talk about right now because this is something you guys can do to go out there and get properties cheap today. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody.